So in the previous video, we saw how to crawl data in S3 using AWS Glue. Now let's see how to crawl Redshift data. So first of all, I'm going to create a Redshift cluster and I'm going to go to Redshift clusters and launch a cluster. And I'm going to do Glue demo as the identifier database name as Glue demo master username as Glue demo provide a password and then click on continue I uh, will select a node type I'm gonna just go with DC to large single node and then I'm just going to click continue and over here we have to select the security group remember we did it in redshift so I'm going to select redshift and then select the role that we had created in the redshift section one important thing that we need to also select in the security group if glue has to access redshift is do not skip this is i have created a self security group and so i'm going to select redshift and the self security group so before you go ahead please go ahead and create this security so i'm going to show you what that is so i'm going to go to ec2 security group self so basically in this security group we are going to open all the port ranges for the same security group so let me go ahead and create a one for you to make sense for inbound i'm going to select all tcp and the source would be this and then click on create So let's create a self security group. So I'm going to go to create security group and then I'm going to click on demo self or uh, give it a name as demo self and then create it. So now we have our demo self created. So I'm going to edit it, all DCP and Let me cancel, refresh it. So now edit it, all TCP. And select demo self, select the ID of itself and then click on save. So whatever uh, security group name you select will utilize in our Redshift. But so basically it is allowing the access to itself for all port ranges. So that's the security group we'll create. And then in the Redshift, we'll select our Redshift security group and the self security group, both. So if you have not seen how to create a Redshift cluster, I recommend to watch our video of the creating a Redshift cluster. And the additional thing over here is the self security group and everything else is same as creating the Redshift cluster. So I'm going to go click continue, click on launch cluster. And uh, please make sure you want to take backup or delete the cluster once you're done because it's going to incur charges. So this cluster is being created. So we'll wait for it to be created and then we'll join back. So while the cluster is being created, we need to do one more thing. We have to add a VPC endpoint to S3 or S3 VPC endpoint. So what I'm going to do is go to VPC, go to endpoints. I already have an endpoint, but go to click on create endpoint and then select S3 from here and then select your default route table if you are if you want this to be in your default vpc and that's what we are doing right now you're just going to select default vpc you can create your own vpc and experiment with it but right now we just select the default vpc whichever is in your account and then select the route table for it to route the or add the routes for s3 endpoints and then click on create endpoint so this will create an endpoint 
So I'll cancel out because I already have an endpoint created. And if you go to route tables, click on modify and let me just go to route tables from here. I have this route table and you'll see it added this endpoint over here, the VPC endpoint to S3 or a route to S3. So that's another thing we need. So basically for the Redshift demo, you need a Redshift cluster, of course, but the modification over there is that you need to add an additional security group. And then the second is to add the S3 endpoint. And it took me a while to figure this out. It didn't work initially when I was starting with AWS Glue, but uh, later on I had to figure out that these two steps are important if you want Glue to connect to Redshift. And in the previous video, we saw the IAM role that we had to create. So that's already done to the service role for AWS Glue. So once this is done, in the next video we'll see how to crawl the Redshift data once our cluster is ready.